Hi, welcome to Garage Geek. So today you're getting a different Garage Geek. I'm on vacation and right now I'm in kind of central northern Pennsylvania at a friend's house. This is actually the mid midway stop on my vacation. I'm going to talk a little bit about my trip in a bit, but I want to start with what I normally talk about. And then if people want to zone out, they don't have to listen about my trip. So the first order of business is, but you're also getting a vacation garage geek. Notice I don't have my hat on. I don't mind showing you that I'm, you know, going like halfway bald. This is my sister's uh, pizza shop. And I'm actually gonna show you uh, some reviews. She has five star reviews for everyone who's gone there. And she's in this like really small town on the border of Ohio and uh, Pennsylvania. She makes excellent pizza. I know I'm biased, but it's it's, true everyone that's gone there that i know they rave about the pizza so the first thing that i want to talk about is the 10 question contest for robert z so he has a coda for like some kind of bonus final question is talk about how robert z has influenced you so i'm gonna do that even though i'm gonna do it my answer is a little bit underwhelming sorry robert I'm really new to the VC, and in fact, July 2nd is my one year anniversary in the VC. Since I'm on vacation, I can't really do much about it. I did want to make a video, you know, hey, I've been in the VC one year, boom, okay, whatever. Well, I'm not going to be able to do that because I'm going I'm going to be still on my vacation. When I, f I think when I first started, or within a month or so, I did see Robert Z's video, and I think I got there because of uh, B. Besides, I mentioned him or referred to a video, so I went over and watched uh, one of his videos. I really liked it. I subbed. You know, I, I didn't see any videos from him for a long time. I don't know if it's because he wasn't showing up in my feed, or I think he took a little bit of a vacation for a few months. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I didn't investigate that. But then I came back, and um, it was around the time of this contest, I think or maybe a little bit before. I really don't have a lot of exposure to Robert Z's videos. But what I am going to say is that I really like Robert Z's humor. He, very interesting. He just kind of says whatever's on the top of his head and he doesn't edit it out. So it's it's really funny. It's refreshing. I think, you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of a VHF uh, late night uh, movie show host for, in Cleveland where I grew up. It was Big Chuck, Little John, and Houlihan. And they would, you know, show movies and in between they would do little skits and they would make jokes. And I think that's the kind of thing he's he was born to do. You were born just a little too late, Robert. So I think that would have been your uh, true calling. But hey, I en really enjoy your videos and haven't been in the VC very long. So I do appreciate you and I will uh, absolutely continue watching your videos. This has all been fun. And by the way, I am now registered as one of the people. So if you uh win uh doesn't matter i'm gonna win anyway so i won't have to send something to myself but if if i happen to not win well then i will be one of the people sending you stuff <laughs> so beware of whatever garage geek sends you because it's gonna maybe you know not be something that everybody really wants but it's gonna be something that's really good. I've only watched one movie, and that was a movie before I went on vacation, and that was uh, Gamora. I picked it for my husband and I to watch during the afternoon, and he got mad because if I pick a movie and it's boring, he, he it's like it was a personal insult against him, and he gets mad that I wasted his time. I mean, it's an old monster movie, right, from the 60s, and it's not gonna have the same pacing as a modern movie. And I should learn my lesson, but I love watching old movies so much that every once in a while I try to watch one with him and it just backfires. I don't know why I keep trying. But anyways, we watched it and I enjoyed it, right? For what it is, it's an old monster movie, right? And he goes through and he tears stuff up. I mean, you know, that's what it is. He makes friends with a, a young boy. That always seems to happen in these these monster movies. It seems like that's a like a Japanese fantasy of young children bonding with these gigantic uh, behemoths. Uh, whatever, that just seems to be a thing. I guess it gives it a human angle. So I would say, you know, based on my description, like if you're a fan of these movies, it's one of the ones you have to see. But if you don't like slower paced, older uh, monster movies, then yeah, you won't like, my, like my husband, you won't like it. I did read or listen to one book on the flight, which was uh, the fourth, I think it was called The Jabber? Or the the jigger, I don't know. That sounds like a weird a weird title, but it means someone who can safe crack. 
And so it's the fourth, I think it's the fourth book in that in the series that I'm reading about a career criminal. And this one was very good as well. I'm really, in, this might even be the fifth one. I'm really enjoying this series and I'm going to continue with it. So I, I highly recommend this book. It's, it was about the main character investigating. A fr He's not really a friend. He was a colleague. And the colleague mysterious die, uh, mysteriously dies after inviting him. And even the letter that he sent was a bit strange. Now, the, the main character wanted to go possibly just to kill him because he knew a lot of stuff and he was getting old and senile. And so he would probably reveal stuff either in writing or to police. And so he was going to investigate. And as he goes there, um, he finds out that the guy is already dead. And so he's starting, he starts investigating like why this happened and how it happens. And then we also like, like these books do, it will shift to another person's point of view. So we will get another idea of how different criminal elements work. Very short. It was four hours total two hours for me because I listened to it double speed. I was going through some of my stuff that I have here. So um, at my friend's house, I have a bunch of stuff in his closets. And every time I come, I just grab some of the stuff. And I have a bunch of old cassettes. And most of them are Arabic language cassettes because I lived in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. So I'm going to I'm going to show off uh, some of the cassettes that I found. Now, the first one I have is Voyager or Voyager by Enigma. I love those full frontal art cassettes. Next, this one is really interesting. It's a double cassette of Pink Floyd's Echoes, the best of Pink Floyd. And it's one of these weird, they kind of, it's hard, but they're, they're really hard to open without breaking. But yeah, they, they fold out like this from the spine. They're just weird, weirdly put together. I don't know if any of you have had this, but yeah, nice set a lot of these i i i got when i was uh in saudi arabia and in kuwait this one is ovo by peter gabriel maybe, maybe having something to do with an egg i don't know i don't even remember this the best new age album in the world ever two <laughs> So this stuff has like Yanni, Vanessa May, Atmara Lieber, Enigma, Sheila Chandra, George Benson. So yeah, you know, you know, fun. So I I'm I was into New Age for a while. I I, I still am. So this one even has an EMI Middle East sticker. I don't know if this one is readily available. This is Iron Maiden, Edward the Great, the greatest hits. Now I love that cover art. This is music. Can you let me know? You're a big Iron Maiden fan. And in fact, as soon as I saw this, I thought this is a cassette that I need to send to This Is Music. So This Is Music, let me know if th if you have this or if it's available because I already do have a little package that I need to send you and I need to stop being cheap and I just have to bite the bullet and pay the shipping. <laughs> All right. And then the last one I have is... Willie Nelson's Rainbow Connection. So you can see the kind of music <laughs> that I bought. It's kind of like all over the place, right? You've got new age, you've got country, you've got uh, heavy metal. Yeah, that pretty much covers it. And then I have, like I said, I have a lot of uh, Arabic singers. So there, you got some music, right? You didn't even realize it. Another thing that happened when I was in Ohio was that my niece found a couple hundred, I mean a lot, maybe close to, I don't even know how many, maybe a thousand, that might be too many, but she found a lot. She found a lot of comic books that were thrown in the trash. And she saved them, but they're very worn, many of them, and they have a lot of, you know, spine ticks, they were very dirty. Uh, mold was starting to get on some of them. I went to her and I said, you know, she doesn't know much about comics. And so I took them from her. I am going to pay them, pay her for them. But I'm, I'm cleaning them up. And I had to wipe every uh, comic front and back just to get rid of, like when I would pick up the comics, my fingers were all uh, dirty and black. Like the, these comics really need a lot of care and love, but they were like 10 to 25 cent comics almost all of them they're gorgeous so i've had to clean them and it, it's actually taken a lot of work i'm packing them up i'm putting them in boxes i'm going to ship them uh i mean i don't really want to do that but it's it's all i can do i can just hope that they don't get lost in the mail and so what i am going to do is that there are a couple that are worth some money 
So this is an original of this one. Now I'm actually gonna carry these home in my suitcase and I'm gonna to try to get some of them graded, the ones that are worth it, and then try to sell those to get her some money to pay for it. Now, unfortunately, when she was looking up the prices, she was looking up prices for it like, <laughs> like that one. When I saw it, I was floored. I'm going to show you a picture of it. I can't believe it. And, you know, John Romita Jr. just died, unfortunately. But this is, you know, one of his most iconic covers. So I'm going to try uh, to see if I can get it, especially that one graded. And see if I can get her some money. Now, she doesn't understand much about comics. Now, for example, many of them are like this. They're like really, really torn up. But this is Action Comics number 300. Such a cool cover. When she looks them up online, she... You know, looks up, you know, 9.5, and most of these comics are in the 2 to the 4 range, right? And they're all discolored. They're none of them, none of them have white pages. Like, I mean, they were in the trash. What an amazing find, right? Like, I, I'm going to show off these comics once they arrive in Los Angeles so that I can uh, go through them. So many beautiful books, but with so many problems like there's so much like spine ticks spine rolls rips mold issues discoloration but it, for me it's a labor of love and if i can get her some money the problem with this is that i've never gotten comics graded before and i actually have two that i want to get graded i have the first appearance of wolverine and so this is a good thing because i actually want to sell those i have reprints and i don't need the originals i i wouldn't mind using uh that money to to buy some older Spider-Man and Fantastic Fours that I would, an X-Men, that I would never uh, buy uh, because they're so expensive. But with the money that I get from those comics, then I would feel okay going ahead and, and buying some of those. All right, so for the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about m my trip. Um, I'm going to show you some examples. I'm going to show you pictures uh, that I took. If this doesn't interest you, so you, you might uh, want to stop now. But hey, I actually think I'm, I'm going to have a lot of uh, really interesting uh, history and things to show you because I use a couple of websites that take you off the beaten path. And so some of the things that I have to show you are kind of like roadside Americana. I stopped. The first stop was Cleveland. Uh, I was on the west side of Cleveland in my hotel. I have family in, in Cleveland, uh, but my friend from Pennsylvania, he met me and m my plane got in so late. We decided to get a hotel so as not to bother my family. And like I got I arrived at 1 30 in the morning it was even, it was a bit late I was supposed to come in at 12 but I got in at 1 30 the next morning we got up and we were on the west side so I went to the Rocky River Reservation now I lived near there for about four years of my life but in the reservation which is a, a big park there's a statue to Smokey who is a World War II hero he's a dog this dog took communication lines in his mouth and crawled through tunnels and delivered the lines so that they could uh, establish communications. And then later, he was the first recognized therapy animal or dog. They've got a statue to him, and it's so cute. All the rest of the stops in Cleveland are the Cleveland signs. Now, these are new, so I grew up in and around Cleveland. I have to say that when I was young, Cleveland was not a nice place to go but it's very beautiful now they've really cleaned it up it was called the mistake by the lake everyone uh, probably knows that the Cuyahoga River which f goes right into Lake Erie it caught on fire Cleveland was the joke of the nation now it's really unfair because you know Cleveland is a heavily industrial city and industrial cities make things for the rest of the country but wow is it pretty and it's 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 all cleaned up they put uh, these Cleveland signs at six points throughout Cleveland. And since these are relatively new, I decided I would go see them. The first one was in the airport. So as soon as I got my bags at 1.30 in the morning, I had to run all the way down. My friend was waiting for me outside. And I'm like, nope. I ran all the way to the very end of the baggage claim and I got a couple pictures of the first Cleveland sign. Now, the, the interesting thing about this one is they decorate it seasonally. So you can go online and you can see how they do it for summer, for fall, for winter. It's, it's kind of cute. So there are five more. So I'm the first one I think that we went to see was in the flats. So the flats is basically a valley 
and the flats became so hugely popular because they put in all these bars and nightclubs and so that really revitalized it and it's right along the river so so pretty there's the flats then the second one was in very close to it in an area called tremont the third one i think we overshot so i actually got the next two out of order the third one we went to i think the rock and roll hall of fame which of course that's a world famous destination for so many people now which has really helped cleveland and that museum is stunningly gorgeous it is so cool and then we backtracked and went to edgewater park now edgewater edgewater park is a park that i went to quite a few times when i was young and so this side this sign is is in a place that i was i was very familiar with it's basically there's this hill that, and then at the bottom of the hill is this beach and it overlooks Cleveland. The fifth, I hope I'm not leaving one out. And the last one was in Eastlake. So if, if I left one out, I'll, I'll just put it on the screen and I'll, I'll put an explanation. So the last one was in Euclid Beach. Now this is, a, a, this is an area where my sister lived a long time. So we used to go in this area a lot as well. So Euclid Beach, and it was funny because I, you had to cross over a bridge and then there was the beach. And it, it was actually uh, the whole, this whole trip, you know, it's a little bit muggy over here and I kind of just wanted to jump in and it was a weekday and there was a lifeguard there and there was no one at the beach and I just wanted to jump into the water because I used to do that as a kid all the time. My sister used to have a couple of times she had, she would rent a house like giant houses right on the like cliff and we would go down uh, me and my niece who's four years younger than me and we would go down uh, the cliff and we would be right there in, in the lake and we it was, it's amazing and those places now are probably very expensive it's such a different time right you used to be able to rent things a whole house on the beach like overlooking a cliff for nothing of course i you know i met with my family and did all this I, and i went out to m m my sister's which is she's and over ohio for this pizza shop the real uh you know like the sightseeing part started you know you can pick these up everywhere this is a map of the united states and it's um a national park service map so you can see all of the national parks and sites and historical monuments and there's there's a bunch of different categories and they're all listed on this map so the first place we went to was we actually uh, this was something my friend picked and i'm glad he did we went to the mckinley presidential library wow the tomb of mckinley was so pretty it reminded me of the the tomb of i always get this wrong grant's no not grant's tomb garfield sorry garfield's tomb i think is in is in um a cleveland cemetery lakewood lakeview it's actually where uh, my father's buried so i actually visited my father and then i wanted to take my friend to the garfield tomb uh, but it was closed, and this is the second time I've taken him there, and it's been closed. So Cleveland, get your act together and get that Garfield tomb open. And then we went to the first national historical site. Now, I am doing this book. If you're unfamiliar with it, so most people use this. This is a passport system. And when you go to a national uh, park or a site, right, you get a cancellation stamp. It's just kind of the fun thing to do, you know, to be on your travels. Later, and you can see here's some more. I graduated to this book. Now, this is basically an adult sticker book. So what you do is you buy these sticker packs that come out one per year, and then you affix them in the book. And then when you get the, when you visit the place, you get the stamp. So I'll show you an example. I visited those places and I've got the stamp and I still need to go to this one. That's just kind of a fun, like adult interactive stamp book, right? For uh, national uh, sites in the United States. So on this trip, I have visited these five so far. And it's really funny because this is like tailor-made for my trip. So these are the National Parks of Western Pennsylvania. And except for the First Ladies, which is the one I went to in Ohio, right? I went to all five of these, so I'm going to be talking about those. The First Ladies, uh, what it does is it commemorates the first, you know, like it says, the First Ladies of the, of the United States. And when I was there, it had a Jacqueline Kennedy exhibit. So from the First Ladies, we drove to this ice cream stand that was in the shape of a snowman. 
Now, when my friend is a little bit older, like he's 73 already. He was like, we drove two hours for this. It's just this snowman. But you know what? The ice cream was really, really good. Even he said, like this ice cream was good. And you're going to see a picture. I got, I got the uh, cheesecake flavored and so did he. And he was like, wow, this is really good. So even though it, and it was pretty much on the way anyway, but we, what, what is really cool about what I did is we avoided the main freeways and we were able to take the, you know, the back kind of country roads and see a little bit more of Pennsylvania, right? So even though he's from Pennsylvania and we normally would just go one highway all the way across, we went the Southern route and kind of did like a U up to his house. So the first stop was that snowman. And then the second stop was Mars, Pennsylvania, where there was a flying a uh, saucer that's in the town square and every once in a while people steal the flying saucer and they don't like really steal it they just put it somewhere else and the, the townspeople have to go hunt for it and find it and then um they always put it back in the town square i thought that was kind of funny and so then the next stop was the cemetery where night of the living dead the opening scene of night of the living dead was filmed and i found the two graves that are featured most prominently in in the film you know the very famous scene where they where he says they're coming to get you barbara they're coming to get you barbara stop it you're ignorant night of the living dead has been registered as a cultural a uh, landmark that is important to um, American film, right? So George Romero was a you know a student filmmaker, and he made this this film that was so important to popular culture, and it went on you know spawned so many other types of of zombie movies. And in fact, later I'll talk about how we went to the Monroeville Mall where we saw um, where which was where Dawn of the Dead was filmed. So that's coming later. So then we, we did all through Pittsburgh. And I'm not going to talk about all the places we stopped. Like I stopped, saw so many statues. Uh, but one thing that was this scary. Uh, so Pittsburgh, there are so many hills. In fact, I went to the steepest uh, street. It's called Canton Street. And I actually walked up it. And it was so muggy. And it was I was like sweating by the time I was done with it. And it's only one block long. And I was surprised. There are so many hills in Philadelphia. Now, I lived in San Francisco a long time. So it was like being in San Francisco. But as we were driving, we would have to go down these hills. And like when you're first going, you can't even see until you go over the hill. And I wonder what that must be like in the winter because they have severe winters just like Cleveland. And some of their driveways, would they were going straight up. And I was like, how do these people get out of their driveways in the winter? This, I don't know, that would just be insane. So if any of you know the Philadelphia area and you, you've driven through there in winter, tell me what that's like. So saw a bunch of statues that overlooked the city. Yeah, we just, we I went through all all through Pittsburgh. One of our final stops was the Monroeville Mall, which is where I went to this Living Dead Museum. So this this honors the fact of George Romero. You have to pay to go in it and you go through it and it's basically all these uh, movie posters and props and from different uh, movies. It's a museum to commemorate zombie movies, which is kind of fun. It's got a little shop which is where I, I bought this uh, magnet. And they have a bust of George Romero and I swear, I had to go to the bathroom, so I went down this long, I mean, this hallway was long, all the way to get to the bathroom, really long hallway, and I thought to myself, I swear they used this hallway in one scene in the movie where they, you know, the, the zombies bust in through the back or something, I don't know. But it was just so cool to be in, in those places where they filmed. Oh, we also went into the town, and I saw a little um, area where they uh, have a plaque to uh, George Romero. It was actually a little bit hard to find. I walked around that building like twice before I saw it was in a little grassy area off to the side. The next day we woke up in Morgantown, West Virginia. We stopped at a Don Knotts statue. Now Don Knotts is an American actor who was in the Andy Griffith show, among other things. And so as a kid, I watched that show, grew up 
at that show. So I really wanted to see the Don Knotts statue. Now the first uh, national park site we went to was the Friendship Hill National Historic Site. So this site has to do with finances and economy. So I, um, I basically, I walked around the property. It was, it was a gorgeous property. I actually went to find the grave of, I think the, the wife or the daughter, uh, I forget. And so I walked along. Um, there is a loop track around the property, which I wish I could have done, but I did do a short hike there and the, the property was very gorgeous and peaceful. The next stop was the Fort Necessity National Battlefield. Now this one was also a very pretty property where they you just take a, sh a short hike down and you get to see a small fort. fort. And this, I believe, was the only uh, the only place that George Washington, as a general, suffered a defeat, and that was for the it was against the French and Native Americans during the French. I guess they called the French Indian War. <laughs> They're probably gonna have to change that title. Well, that reminded me that the um, the I get, I don't know when this happened, but the Cleveland Indians. The name was finally changed to the Cleveland Guardians. And the final one that we saw that day was the best one, in my opinion. So that was to commemorate the Flight 93. When you first go into the property, you'll see a giant tower. Now, this tower is basically a giant wind chime, and it has 40 chimes, one for each of the passengers that died on the flight. Now, what is really interesting is that there were actually 44 people on the flight, you know, they're not going to commemorate the, the four terrorists on the flight. And then when you go to the, uh, you drive for a little bit and you get to a uh, main uh, building and this is where it has exhibits. It's, it's so well done. It's, it's a very moving exhibit, actually. As you, uh, you actually drive just a little bit more, you walk along the flight path and then at the very end, they have a walk wall with all the names of uh, the people who are on the flight. And yeah, it's a very, very moving music. We stayed in Johnson City that night, I think. And um, in Johnson City, there was a couple of things. Uh, John, sorry, John's Town. Before we went to the hotel, there was a, a mural for Steve Ditko. And I guess it's the only authorized mural. And it has Spider-Man and Doctor Strange in the mural. So I thought uh, Cosmic Brian would want to see this because he's a big Doctor Strange fan. So yeah, it was a very pretty mural. Now, what is freaky is, I don't think I mentioned, but in, in Philadelphia, I saw the Duquesne Incline and I thought that was really crazy. And then the I was just driving and I saw the the one in Johnstown. The incline, just seeing that thing, I was, I had to stop. I was like, this thing is crazy. The incline is like this. And I've actually ridden inclines before. I rode one in Japan, but they weren't that long. They were much shorter. And so they're scary because they go up at this big angle. But wow, this one is huge. And it was, it's like looking at a roller coaster, I guess. I don't know. The one that was in Pittsburgh, there was a huge line. So we didn't uh, get a line to go ride it. And the one in, in uh, Johnstown was closed. Uh, but just seeing it was, was really amazing. So the next day we had two uh, national parks to see, and that was the Johnstown Flood Memorial and the Allegheny Portage Railroad National Historic Site. Now the Johnstown Flood Memorial is uh, not the same as the museum. We didn't actually go to the museum. And there's one thing that we, we tried to do, but uh, we got there late and it was closed. And that was the, I guess the Greenfield Cemetery. And that's where the, the bodies of, I think 700, over 700 people are buried. They didn't know who they were. Uh, so anyways, when you go to the Johnstown Flood National Memorial, you don't realize this, but when you get off the, the freeway and you drive, you're driving the whole length of the lake. And then when you drive out again, you drive the other half. Now, there was a man-made lake and it was sold and r rich people built this huge uh, getaway property. You know, it was like a summer getaway property, but there was a dam there. Uh, it was holding back the waters of a lake and they didn't upkeep it the way that they should. And so it finally, during this really huge rainstorm, it, it, and it burst. And it was like a wave of water 40 feet tall. And it slammed through the valley. It followed the course of the river. It slammed into Johnstown and killed over 
2,000 people. It was, it's one of the greatest, uh, the biggest disasters in American history. And I didn't even, I don't even remember learning about it in school, but it's, it's really important. And this memorial, like really just put it into perspective because you're standing there. Like the property that it's on isn't really imposing. You're just looking over a valley. But then once you realize what you're looking at, like the whole valley had been a lake and that water went, you know, slamming into a town and basically destroyed the entire town, killing over 2,000 people. It's, um, it was a really powerful, uh, to see that. And then the next one we went to was the Allegheny Portage Railroad. What's really interesting about this one is it would take people about 23 days to get from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia. I think that's what it was, 23 days. And so someone came and because of the, the mountain in the way, what one person came up with was a series of steps like locks. So they would drag all the goods down the canal and then they would put the, the material on these, from the canal boats, they would put them on these train lines and they would pull them up over the mountain in like a series of steps. And they reduced the 23 day travel time down to five days. And what's really interesting is this only lasted about 20 years or so because pretty soon they built the railroad and that just wiped this all out. But for 20 years, this was the way that they used to get, get over the mountain. I just thought that was ingenious. And this is this little piece of history that is commemorated um, at the Allegheny Portage Railroad National Historic Site. And so from there, um, we drove to uh, my friend's house and we're here for just a couple of days in fact today is the last day and then tomorrow we're going to start the second leg of my, my trip which is going to take me through nine historic sites and through Philadelphia and then we're leaving from uh, New York we're just driving into New York and then flying out I want to thank you for watching and the next time you see me I'll be back in my uh, garage uh, filling you in on the last part of my trip. Thank you so much. And of course, I love all the comments. <laughs>